Hello and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan. I'm the uh, CEO and President of uh, Advanced Gold. Uh, we've got some exciting news. Uh, I'm doing a screen share here. Here's our website at advancedgold.ca. And uh, the news we had out was on September the 5th that I'd like to discuss with you. And in that news, we pu published our new geophysical report. Um, here's a, an image of a couple of the lines from the report and some proposed drill holes from that report. Um, we've also published the actual geophysical report that you can download on the on the website. There's the entire report that I'm now putting up on the screen so you can go through that. Um, before I get started uh, on, the, on the geophysical report, I wanted to put it into a little bit of context. Um, not long before we did the geophysical report, we had published a 3D model of the gold and silver mineralized epithermal vein system. And uh, to put this into context, this one I'm looking from the north to the south. Uh, in that you can see this is the old uh, workings of the, of the past production by Panoles. Uh, in these uh, purple uh, and, uh, and dots, what you're seeing is on one side is gold mineralization, on the other is silver mineralization. Now, it's important to note that this is above the boiling zone of the epithermal vein system. So what you're really looking for in this kind of uh, area is for the gold and silver mineralization, uh, which we have found lots of. And I'd also point out that everywhere you see gold, on the other side you see silver in each of the holes where we had intersections as well. So. The next big plan was for us to try and find the uh, boiling zone of that system. And to do that, we did this geophysical survey. And uh, as I said, you can find the, uh, the news release. I have to send a thank you to um, uh, Gennon McDowell. He's my uh, mentor in geophysics, and he's also a, 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 an advisor, helped me out with the press release. Um, so you can see his workings in some of that, uh, some of the news release, and he's a very, uh, very informed guy. He was formerly the uh, head of global exploration in in uh, geophysics for Anglo, the largest gold producer in the world. So Gennon is very well informed of the business of the geophysics, and was very helpful in me understanding. Now, I'm going to go to the project section. Uh, to the Tabasquenia area. And what you'll find there is if you go down to the geophysics, we've also published all the uh, reports in there. So let's get started on, on what we did. So uh, first of all, here is the 3D IP survey grid. Those green lines, the overall claim block is in black. The uh, geophysical survey, these are the green, these green lines are what we did, they're uh, anywhere from about 500 to 1,000 meters wide, east to west, and we did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lines. Uh, and so that's an important part of the, uh, the grid of where we did it. And then you go, I'm gonna bring this up because this map shows you the elevation contours. So at the northern end of the, uh, of the uh, survey, we were at about, uh, let's say, 20, 2,200 meters above sea level. By the time you get down to the southern part of the grid, you're down to uh, around 2,000 meters above sea level. So there's about a 300 meter um, gap in between this, um, uh, uh, the various lines from north to south. That will be important later as I uh, continue the discussion. Uh, then what, we, what I wanted to highlight is um, here we have a series of the lines. So this is the first uh, uh, induced polarization survey. 
Uh, I want to get you to the cross sections of the various different lines. Um, sorry about that. Uh, here we are, IP sections. So this is the most uh, northerly line, I believe. Uh, line seven. No, this is the south, actually. I'm going to go about it the other way. Uh, so here's the northern line. And um, if you look down at this uh, bottom section here, uh, what you're going to see is a chargeability. There's an anomaly there, but again, I focus back to that uh, 300 meters in difference in, um, in the elevation. Here, you're basically as probably far away from the anomaly as you can get with the quality of the geophysical survey. It's not the quality, the depth that it can reach. Now I'm moving nor uh, to the south. As you can see in the next line, the anomaly starting to show up. Next line, it's coming up good. Again, we've got a change in the charge uh, in the um, in the uh, uh, elevation. As we come down, we're getting uh, the geofit. The anomaly is showing up better. Uh, there you gain. We're getting further down. More of the anomaly is showing up, as you can see here. As we get uh, further south, it continues to uh, get uh, closer to surface. Again, elevation is important because your the depth that the chart that the IP can see is about four or five hundred meters. So, if you're three hundred meters uh, higher in elevation, you're not going to get as far into the depth, but as you come down in elevation, you're starting to see that uh, anomaly quite more significantly. Again here, you can see the chart, the anomaly showing up nicely. Uh, more south, again, more, more of the anomaly is showing up. And it gets consistent uh, from line to line. There's good continuity as we get deeper, or I mean further to the south with less uh, elevation difference. Again, there's uh, the last line, I believe, and then you go back up to the, um, to the north. So as you can see, as we get to the south, we're getting a, in these last five, six lines, you're getting a very consistent anomaly one slide to the next uh, and um, here this one is uh, what you can see is there is the outline of the main chargeability of the anomaly now it's worth noting again that because you're dealing with elevation changes this anomaly is quite we're quite confident that it goes beyond uh, well up into the uh, north and part of the reason for that is that's where we had some of our thickest intersection of the uh, of the veins are up to the north. This anomaly, I'm um, going to go back to the uh, main map there. Um, this anomaly, as you can see, here's where our old shaft is. Up in here, we're getting into that higher elevation, so we're not getting as good an of a... Uh, of a um, uh, look at de depth wise uh, into the IP uh, uh, induced polarization part of the survey but down in these last five or six lines was where we saw those beautiful anomalies uh, and what what our plans are for the future now is we want to continue to go down to the south here with uh, a new series of lines maybe four or five more lines and uh, see how this uh, anomaly kind of it's been following the 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 um, pretty much follows the Tabascania vein the historical vein that was mined down here in the Tesserito shaft up here in the new Tabascania shaft and the uh, newest shaft uh, that's where in between the Tabascania shaft and the Tesserito shaft is where all the historical mining had undertaken. And again, I'd highlight that this is where you're getting the big uh, booming anomaly. Uh, so we want to extend those lines. And a another reason we want to extend those lines is I'm going to go back to the elevation contours. 
as you get down to the Tesorito, we're down into, you know, down where the anomaly gets shallow is in these last five, five or six lines, and the we continue to get lower in elevation in the uh, from sea level, and so what my hope is, is that as we get further to the south, that that anomaly is closer to the surface and we can reach it with uh, shallower drill holes. So we don't have to go five or 600 meters down like we would here. Maybe down here we would look at, at 300, 200, 300 meter type of lines. So that's the big uh, uh, things I wanted to point out from the survey. Again, I encourage you to check out the news uh, and read the entire report. There's lots of good information. You can find it right in that last news release, right in the second paragraph. You're going to see the uh, geophysical report, and included in that geophysical report, uh, you'll find the conclusions. Um, now, those conclusions are based on uh, this survey. I think once you, once we get into, there's more of the IP grid the changes in the elevation, the technical report. This is a, a shows you all the various different data points that were uh, go, went into the survey. A very thorough survey. We had done, there had been some uh, historical work done in the past on IP, but uh, nothing like this modern survey. And now you can see the uh, some of the uh, anomaly there, it shows up just beautifully as you get uh, down towards the middle of the survey. But again, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd caution not to discount the northern part. It just might be a little more tricky. Here you can see the, the anomaly that we uh, highlighted in the news release and uh, the image that we brought. Here is again that uh, the geophysical survey and the conclusions were done by Joel Simard. Joel had worked with uh, Gennon in the past so, for Anglo. So we know it was a high quality survey, lots of good anomalies there, more work to be done. Um, the survey that we intend to continue is probably going to be a couple of weeks because we don't, it's about half of the length that we did in the first survey. and. Uh, in my quote, I tried to highlight the importance of the survey. To, I tried to put the anomaly in perspective. This is the kind of size that major mining companies would love to have. So we're uh, quite, uh, quite excited about this survey. And uh, on that note, uh, before I mess up too much here, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me. Check out the news and check out the uh, uh, report.